Hi, kindergartners. Welcome back to my science lab. How many of you have a pet at home? You do? That's exciting. I have so many pets here. I have four dogs. I have a cat. I have seven birds. And I have Reptar, the bearded dragon. All of those animals have different coverings, right? Some of them have fur, and some of them have feathers, and some of them have scales. And of course, I have skin, but they all have one thing in common. They have something I don't have. They all have tails. So in today's lesson, we're going to learn about why animals have tails and why people don't. And we're going to start by reading a really fun story. The name of the story is called Little Skink's Tail. Little Skink's Tale by Janet Halfman, illustrated by Lori Allen Klein. Little Skink basked on a big yellow rock in the rays of the warm morning sun. Her chilly body soon turned snuggly warm. She twitched her bright blue tail. The little lizard was ready to start her day. Leaping to the forest floor, she pointed her nose into a crack in a rotting log and looked for breakfast. Sniff, sniff, she smelled ants. She loved ants. Gobble, gobble, gobble! She gobbled down one ant after another. Her tummy was almost full when she felt a peck on her tail. Little Skink was trapped. There was no way to run, but she had a trick. I'll bet some of you know what her trick is. Quicker than the crow could blink, Little Skink snapped off her bright blue tail. Wiggle, waggle, wiggle went the tail, wriggling wildly through the fallen leaves. The crow forgot all about Little Skink. It wanted that wiggling, waggling tail. As the crow bounced this way and that, Little Skink ran under a log where she was safe. Her wiggling, waggling tail had saved her. And you can see there's Little Skink climbing into a safe spot, and there's her tail wiggling and confusing the poor crow. <clears throat> Pardon me. The next morning, as Little Skink basked on her rock, she felt a little sad. She missed her bright blue tail, even though she was happy to be alive. As she lay basking and thinking about her, as she lay basking and thinking, the cottontail rabbit hopped in front of her rock. Hmm, I wonder how I'd look, how I'd look with a tail like that, little skink thought. She pictured her new look. Very cute, she thought to herself, but too puffy fluffy. Next, she tried a squirrel's tail. It's fun to flick and fluff, she said, but much too bushy. Day after day, she imagined herself wearing the tail of every animal she met. A deer's tail. Look, I can wave it like a little flag, she said but it's too short and stubby. A skunk's tail. Pew, said little skink. 
Stinky, stinky, stinky. A porcupine's tail. Too stickily prickly, she said. And here she is right there with a porcupine tail. An owl's tail. A lizard with feathers, she exclaimed. I don't think so. What do you guys think? How does she look with a owl's tail? A turtle's tail. Too pointy, said little skink. While all of these were fine tails, not one was quite right for her. Then one day, as she scampered onto her sunny rock, her shadow caught her eye. Her shadow had a tail. You see it? She whipped around and sure enough, her tail had grown back. A skink needs a skink's tail, she said, and her tail dreaming days were over. The 